Okay. Praise God, saints. Praise God, saints. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. The Lord has blessed us with another day, another opportunity to come into his house to worship and praise his name. We're so thankful to God to be able to continue in our series on the Ten Commandments. And today we're going to be looking at Exodus 20, verse 15. So if you have your device or Bible, would you find Exodus 20, 15 and let it be known by saying amen and rising to your feet. Those who are able and capable to honor God's word as we read it. Exodus 20, 15. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Version. You may have a different uh, translation or version, but this one is uh, four quick, easy words. Exodus 20, 14. You shall not steal. And God's people say it. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for the word that you provided us. We pray in the precious name of Jesus Christ that you would take this, your servant, hide me behind the cross, that Jesus Christ would be elevated. Speak through me to your children. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You shall not sneal. Millions of dollars are lost every year in this country over the theft of goods and services. One estimate says that one out of every 52 shoppers carries something out of the supermarket for which they haven't paid. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, four million people are caught shoplifting every year. But for every one that is caught, 35 others get away with it. This means that there are over 140 million incidents of shoplifting every year in America. What's really tragic is the statistics state that only 10% of all shoplifters come from low incomes. 70% are middle class and 20% are classified as wealthy. These facts just messed my head up that that many people were shoplifting. America appears to be a country of thieves, people who steal. I suppose that if everyone that was caught shoplifting got sent to jail, we would not have the jails to hold them or the officers to arrest them. One new hotel, one new hotel reported that in their 10 months of operation, they lost 38,000 spoons, 18,000 towels, 355 silver coffee pots, 1,500 silver finger bowls, and 100 Bibles to thieves. I just pray that the people who took those Bibles read them. Regardless of the reason, stealing is wrong. Regardless of the reason, regardless of the rationale, regardless of the justification, the, the text and the Bible is clear that stealing under any conditions is wrong. So before we get too far into the text, I think we need to have an agreement on what's, what is stealing. Stealing is taking what does not belong or entrusted to you. Taking what does not belong or entrusted to you is stealing. And for us to get a biblical perspective and understanding of this, we must first recognize it, that God owns it all. God owns it all. The psalmist said, the earth is the Lord's and all in it contains the world and those who dwell in it. The psalmist was clear that God owns everything. The earth is his, and all it contains is his. The world and those that dwell in it all belong to God. We must acknowledge all rightful ownership of our assets belong to God. We don't own any. He owns it all. In fact, I'm guilty of saying my wife, my children, my this, my that, but in, in actuality, it's God's stuff that I have been entrusted with a fiduciary responsibility. In other words, 
I have a responsibility of taking care of somebody else's possessions because we don't own it. God's on it. And he gives it to us for us to use for his purpose. And we'll talk about that a little later. But if we think about if it all belongs to God, wouldn't we be prone to not steal? If we knew what we were taking was belong to God, but we believe it belongs to other people. But when we acknowledge the fact that he owns it all, that ought to be enough to stop us. And I know what you're thinking because I said the same thing. I don't steal. I don't rob people. I haven't taken anybody's stuff. But as I got into the text and read it and did some more study, I can just tell you I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of having stolen before. I just have to tell you I'm guilty of having stolen before. We need to understand that God, the second point is, God is sovereign and distributes as he pleases. Because he owns it all, and because he's a sovereign God, he can choose how and when it's distributed. Deuteronomy 11.31 says, For you are about to cross the Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall possess it and live in it. God was making it very clear to the children that the land that they were going to possess was land that he was giving to them. It wasn't their land. It was God saying, I'm entrusting this land to you. He made it very clear that I'm the one that distributes goods, services, and assets to those who I wish in, to have it. And here's why that's critical. I think we need to recognize that God is the ultimate decision maker and not us. God is the ultimate decision maker. How many times have you questioned, why does somebody have so much and so many others have so little? Why would God give this person this but not give that to me? God is reminding us that he's sovereign, that he can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, to who he wants. And in fact, Matthew 20, there's a parable that gives us some guidance in this issue. You Bible students will recall Matthew 20, the, the landowner is looking for some day laborers. It's harvest time and he does not have enough workers. So he goes to the, the local, the local uh, uh, community area where all of the people who are looking for work. He gets there early in the morning and hires them to go and work. Later in the day, he comes back and hires some more to go to work. He then even goes in the very evening, the last hour, hires some more to go to work. It was the custom of that day because they were out of work to pay them at the end of each day. So when it was time to pay, those that were paid, those that came last were paid first. And the Bible tells us that those that came in the last hour and only worked an hour received a denarius, a day's work, a day's worth of wages. So the Bible tells us, can you just imagine, can you just imagine somebody working one hour and getting paid a full day's worth of wages and you worked all day? And I'm just using my holy sanctified imagination. I can just imagine as they were lined up that those fellows that were in line waiting to get paid saw them fellows that only worked an hour and said to themselves, oh my, if they got a day's wages, what am I gonna get? The Bible tells us that when it came time for them to receive their earnings, their wages, the Bible says they grumbled, they murmured, they complained to God. Is that right? For the person who only worked one hour to get the same thing that I worked all day for? The Lord's response was recorded in Matthew 20:15. Or the, the response to the owner says, is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with what is my own? Or is it your eye envious because I'm generous? They were being reminded that I own it all and I can do whatever I want with it. It's mine. 
mind. We're going to talk about coveting later on. But we need to understand what God has in store for us is for us. And we miss our blessing by looking at somebody else's. So many times we get caught up in what somebody else has and lose sight of the fact of what God has given us. We should be thankful for what God has given us. If we wake up and we've got a reasonable portion of our health and strength, we ought to be thankful. If we've got food in the pantry, we ought to be thankful. You may not be able to go to Perry Steakhouse every day to have dinner or lunch, but you ought to be thankful you got some pork and beans and weenies. Somebody in here ought to say amen. I was raised on pork and beans and weenies. Hot dogs and pork and beans. Good gracious alive. We need to understand that we should be thankful for whatever God has entrusted to us, whatever we have. And then let's talk about the types of stealing because as I studied this, I was thinking to myself, I have never taken a gun or a knife and forced somebody, robbed somebody. Never done that. Never broke into anybody's house, the only thing. Never done that. So I was feeling pretty good about myself. I hadn't done none of that stuff. But then I got to reading the Bible and understanding what God was saying. And this is when I got in trouble. It wasn't just the fact that I hadn't robbed. It wasn't just the fact that I hadn't been a burglar or shoplifted. I realized that if I didn't pay the taxes that I was due, I was robbing. Oops. And I'll just share with you. I can remember I received one of those 1099s. It wasn't a lot of money, but it was a, a form that you get for getting extra income from someone other than your employer. And it was only $250. And I thought, ah, I'm not going to take the time to fill out a 1099, add that to my form. It's not going to make a difference in the taxes that I pay. I was stealing. By failing to report that, I was stealing. And I didn't recognize that at the time. And I, my justification was, the government doesn't know what to do with it anyway. The government wouldn't know what to do with it. They would mess over it. I'm not going to do it. I got convicted and said, you know what? If it's $10 or $15 or $20, and if I'm legally responsible for reporting it, I should report it. And then I really got burdened down as I continued to to look at some of these other things about stealing. Do you know when you don't pay your debts, you're stealing? If we look at our definition of stealing, if you go and tell somebody, give me this and give me that, and I'll pay you back, and you take possession of the stuff and then don't pay for it, what is that? And I know the law say that we can file bankruptcy. I'll share this with you. I think I've shared it with you before. Early, early, I got into some financial difficulties. The little plastic cards they send you. As soon as I graduated from college, they sent me two or three of those cards. And I got so excited. And I went down to the store, and I told, I may have shared this with you before. I went down there and bought, that's when these Jordache and Calvin Klein jeans were in style. That was the thing. I went to the store and got the Calvin Klein jeans, Jordache jeans. Then I had to go get the Izod matching shirt to go with it. And not only did I get the jeans and the shirt, but then I thought to myself, I'm going to get the belt and the socks. And I'm going to have that thing hooked up. And then the good thing about it was, check this out, blew my mind. I didn't have to pay them right away. I just whipped out that car. I was whipping that card out and whipping that card out. Those bills started hitting, and my check was just slowly dwindling away. I got to the point where I thought about, you know what? I heard about that thing about filing bankruptcy. I called my father, told him about the situation I got myself into. He said, son, all you got is your name. All you got is your name. That way he said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. You said you were going to pay those people. Now you pay them. You pay them. 
I didn't recognize it at the time. But if you don't pay your debts, that's why the Bible tells us, oh man, anything. Don't put yourself in that position. Now, this is the one that really got me. All them pens and pencils and paper and stuff that's on the job. Guess who owns that? The job. You know, if you take something from your job that you're not authorized to take, guess what that is? Stealing. And it wasn't just stuff. It wasn't just stuff. I worked for the highway department over in the summers. This is when I was working my way through college. I'd come home every summer and I worked for the Texas Highway Department. My first year I mowed yards right there at the main building. But the second year, I got my own truck and I drove out to Henrietta, Texas, which was about 13 miles outside of Wichita Falls. There was a rest area. My, I was responsible for driving out there, mowing the yard, edging the yard, cleaning the bathrooms. Each day, I'd go out there and take care of it. Well, we were allowed a 10 minute break in the morning and a 10 minute break in the afternoon and an hour for lunch. But can I share with you, when I took a break, I broke. <laughs> I mean, I would take that 10 minutes and I'd think to myself, man, it is hot out there. I'm gonna take another extra 10. Nobody's out here watching. No, as long as the work is getting done, what's it gonna hurt? So I'd take me a 10, extra 10 minutes, add another 10 or 15 for lunch, then take another 10 or 15 for that second break. I didn't know that I was stealing. I was getting paid to work and didn't work. That's stealing. My brothers and sisters, Christians ought to be the most diligent, hardest working people on the job. We should be the examples. We should be the examples of doing what's right. And most people can justify it. Oh, they don't pay me enough to work like that. Oh, this, oh, give all the reasons and excuses why. Taking time and property from work we're supposed to be working is stealing. I was convicted. And my brothers and sisters, and I'll tell you which one. The Bible tells us, can a man rob God? How have you robbed me? Through tithes and offerings. And I don't preach a lot or talk about tithes and offerings a lot. And here's why. During my early walk with Christ, I didn't trust God enough and didn't have the right relationship with him. And I justified my not tithing by saying, oh, I can't afford it. Oh, the church won't do right by it. I made all these excuses up. It was not until, it was not until I got in the right relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It was not until I fell in love with him. It was not until then that I realized it was more important for me to be in a right relationship with him than all those other things. And so I've often said the Lord will never ever get your checkbook until he has your heart. So the, there are some spiritual problems with stealing. The first is very obvious, it's disregard for others. Someone broke into our home four, five, six years ago, broke in, kicked the door down, ran in, took the VCR TV, some games and other stuff, and left. I was felt so violated that somebody did that. Not more than a month ago, I left my truck open. Somebody came in, took all my change out of the, Brother Jack took all my car washing quarters. You know I was hot. Took my plug to the my Apple charger cord, rambled through everything, threw stuff all out of the, uh, and then even took the keys to the church, and then took the garage door open. I was so upset and angry, I thought to myself, thanks be unto God I didn't catch him. People who will steal have disregard for other people. Thieves are selfish and greedy, they don't care about others or think about others' needs, but only about themselves. Identity theft is on the uprise. People have worked all their lives for savings and somebody comes along and takes their identity, goes out and steals everything
everything they have. What a disregard for others. People say they owe it to me or I'm justified in doing this because I don't have it. They did a survey of people who were in prison for stealing. What they discovered were the prisoners had higher, those that stole had higher self-esteem than the general population at large. But psychologists came to the conclusion their inflated view of self made them think they can take what belonged to others. In other words, I deserve it more than someone else. You know what that is? You're taking the place of God. You're saying God didn't know how to distribute that, but I know how to do it better. So I'll take it from them. It's a total disregard for others and God. The other spiritual problem is most of it comes from valuing material over spiritual. I've already shared with you, I, that was my situation. I value the things of the world, these fancy clothes, this stuff, that stuff. If you're living for the things of this world, you'll be tempted to steal. In fact, Jesus told us, do not store up your treasures on earth where moth and rust do come in and destroy, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust destroys and where thieves do not break in or steal for where your treasure is. There, your heart will be also. That's why I say it's a heart issue. God has to have your heart. You've got to ask for a change of heart that you would, in fact, take the spiritual and put it in front of the temporal and the material. The apostle John wrote, do not love the things of the world nor the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is from the world. And today's marketing and advertising is all designed to lure you in to buy, buy, buy materialism. My brothers and sisters, we need to make sure that our hearts are right and that we're more concerned with doing the things that are pleasing for God than material gain. Yes, when material gain is our ultimate goal. When our ultimate goal, our ultimate goal should be to please God. Well, and finally, my brothers and sisters, the biggest problem, the spiritual problem, comes from a lack of trusting God. Not only do you have a disregard for others, not only are you materialistic and your heart is wrong, but there's a lack of trust in God. A person who steals is obviously not trusting God to provide. Rather, he's disobeying God to probably justify it by thinking, I've got to do what I've got to do to survive. Martin Luther once came up to a group of peasants who were breaking into a meal to take some corn. What do you think you're doing, he demanded. Terrified, one of the men answered, we know it's wrong to steal, but after all, we have to live. Martin Luther told him and responded, I do not know that one must live, but one must be honest. Not trusting God can lead to stealing. And my brothers and sisters, this thing about trusting God, it must first start with us trusting him with our eternal souls before we can ever get to the point where we entrust him with stuff. Until we get to the point in our life where we recognize that we need God as savior of our life, that we need a savior who can send us, who died on the cross and shed his blood to pay for our sins until we get to that point and recognize that we need him as savior, we'll have a problem. And then once we get to the point where we recognize him as Savior, my brothers and sisters, we have to recognize him as Lord. You see, I didn't have a problem with the Savior part. I didn't have a problem with wanting to be saved and to be guaranteed that I'm going to heaven. I was fine with that. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. But then when he started saying, now, I want you to start doing this. I want you to be this kind of person. The Lordship of Christ. Steps in. Not only should he be Savior, but he should be Lord. And Lord means God gives the direction. 
God gives the orders and we follow. I shared this this morning and I've shared it before. I, I, I love dogs and I had a hunting dog named Hope and I think I told y'all about the story about Hope, how he would hunt and do things for me. We got a little puppy, his name's Benji, and supposedly was supposed to be my daughter's dog. My granddaughter's puppy ended up being our dog. A little Benji's 10 months old, little schnauzer. And Benji has just gotten to the point where every day when he hears my truck pull up, he starts yelping and barking, yelping and barking, yelping and barking. And when I come into the house, his tail is just wagging and he runs up and he jumps on me and I just rub on him and love him and say, oh, Benji, good boy, good boy. And his tail just goes crazy and he rolls over and I say, oh, good boy. He just loves it. I thought about something. All I want to hear, all that I ever need, the only treasure that I'm looking for is when I stand before God one day that he would say, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's the treasure. That's the reward that we should all be seeking. And put that in front of everything else and the rest of it will fall in place. Many of you have probably never robbed anybody, burglarized anybody, but how faithful are we to his lordship in our lives? How faithful are we to being obedient to him? I pray this morning that if you don't know Jesus, you make that decision. And if you do, honor him with lordship. And if you've done any of these things in here, just repent and say, you know what, I'll do better. I recognize that this isn't a good witness for me, and I'll do better. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we are so very thankful that you provided for us. Thank you, Lord, that you paid it all for us. And we just ask in the precious name of Jesus Christ that you would continue to work and allow your spirit to convict us to do what we need to do that be pleasing in your sight because we all one day want to hear your majestic voice saying well done my good and faithful servant in the precious name of Jesus Christ we pray amen